Well, hello. Uh, this exercise is going to be speed painting, and this is our scene that we're going to be painting. Um, actually, there were some cows in the uh, in the back there, on in the shadow area. Okay, we're going to start out with cerulean blue um, for the sky. Um, I'm basically getting everything. Um, mapped out. I put a little bit of blue in where the shadow is. You can actually see some of the cows in the quick drawing underneath. Um, now my next move is I am going to mass in the back shapes of the mountain range. Now there are a couple of, you know, actually three tiers that you'll see. Um, and I'm just adding a lot of color. I'm lifting up some color too. I'm adding a little bit of alizarin crimson. The mountain color that I chose to use is ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson and a little bit of the sky color. So there's a little cerulean blue in, in with that, that wash. Um, here I'm just trying to get the breakups of the tiers, the three tiers of the mountain. Um, you know, try to break it up, try to add some texture. You might want to lift some paint up a little bit like I'm doing right here. Um, you'll see that that kind of adds a little interest to the picture. Now, uh, what's the purpose of these um, demonst uh, the, these little exercises? Well, it's to react to the shape quickly, not to get all caught up in little detail, but just to see the abstraction of your composition. And everything can be broken down into shapes, okay? Um, if you guys want to do a little research, there was a man, uh, artist named Edgar Payne, um, and he, you can probably just Google his name and find a lot of stuff about compositions and how he broke things down into different shapes. Um, and that's kind of what we're doing here, but we're doing it with watercolor. And um, now you can, you can also do this with pencil, but uh, since this is a watercolor video, we're going to respond to our shapes directly and broadly, right? We're not going to kind of work, you know, little tiny, tiny brushes. We want to try to keep big, big strokes happening um, and adding some texture too. I mean, we, we do, you do have to add some sort of a embellishment that's going to represent whatever it is that you're painting. So for like purpose here, we're painting the, pine trees so we clearly want to make the pine trees you know the pine tree shape so um you know instead of just triangles all right so um you know you are creating a little bit of a picture here too so but you're also trying to keep you know the big big shapes prevalent throughout the whole painting and that's why they take you know i'm allowing 20 minutes per picture um Anything more than that, then you, you, you might run the risk of overworking. Uh, the whole idea, too, with these exercises is to try to keep the, um, the, wash, the washes that we use to a minimum of at least three. Okay, three is kind of pushing it. So um, if you do any more than three, you get into four, five, six, then, then your watercolors start to get a little laden down. Um, you know, unless you unless you've been working in that very structured manner, um, you you know you know how to put the paint on you know and build up without having it to look overworked. So, but when you're starting out and you want to you want to learn how to paint in the spontaneous way, which a lot of my students like to do, um, you know they 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 want it they want their paintings to have a little bit more uh, spontaneity, a little. You know, uh, more painterly. Uh, so here I'm, what I'm doing here, as far as the greens were concerned, um, the base colors of the greens are sap green. Uh, the darker greens, I used a mixture of burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and I use viridian green. Okay, that viridian green is a little metallic, which kind of makes it look nice when the trees are backlit. Okay, because you're really seeing... Um, okay, so now we're on to a Parisian cafe scene, um, and we're going to start this exactly the same way we started uh, the Rocky Mountain um, scene with, with our cows. Uh, okay, um, 
wet wash. Actually, this started out just, you know, wet onto dry. Um, sorry, I hit the uh, camera there. Um, and it's going to be wet into wet. I did dry it a little bit because I wanted to kind of stop some of the running. But you'll see that um, now going back over it, I can get a little bit more um, texture and depth to those this uh, kind of dispersed clouds right so now going back over it and you'll see that I add a little bit more water too I'll spray it a little bit more and that's how you can kind of create like a, um, a misty sky um, by doing stuff like that and even taking your um, paper towel or your napkin and just blotting up some of the paint and you can get you know some interesting soft dispute you know diffuse clouds um, that that's what we're working on there and um, all right so the building um, that again was cerulean blue for the sky now I'm using a, a little more saturated cerulean blue with a, a little bit of burnt umber and um, and I think I used a little tiny bit of yellow ochre just to kind of give it like a more turquoisey color you could see it more prevalent here now I'm adding more of the uh, yellow ochre because that's the color that I was seeing in the picture. Um, I saw that I had to go a little darker, so I'm adding a little bit of burnt umber. I still want to keep it warm, but also in keep introducing the cerulean blue. Now, what's good in composition and when you're painting, you want to try to use the same colors of the sky in some of the shadow colors so you want to introduce that cerulean blue into the shadow shapes and that's what I'm doing here and um, now there's the roof line you will see some uh, you know that's where the windows are right on top Sa again same color it's sort of like this detoned uh, neutral uh, yellow ochre and burnt umber wash now here this is Again, the same color, but now I'm using a little bit more of the uh, cerulean blue to the yellow ochre and a bit of burnt umber to get this tone. If you can, if you see the whole, this whole area now, it almost looks like it's two colors, which kind of it was, right? Um, uh, there, but there might have been a little bit more, but but what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring in the colors of the sky. In with into the shadow, because normally on a on a day where this when the sun is shining, sunlight is usually on the warm side, and your shadow shapes are usually on the cool side. So you have to kind of keep that in mind if you really want to push the effect of the background to so it marries in with the foreground. Try to use those two colors. Um, you know, in, to your advantage, and you'll notice that your your shadows become more vibrant um, because of it. Because you'll have a uh, warm light and cool shadows, and it just gives you that nice color vibration that that you need. You know, just to make your paintings a little bit more interesting. Um, now here, I'm just massing in, I'm massing in the the, the tree shapes in here, and um, and just trying to get, you know, random tree shapes. I don't know what that is, person, probably not. Looks like a, whatever it is, it's just an embellishment. Now I'm massing in some of the tree shapes and uh, getting some of the tree colors in there. Uh, that's probably a yellow ochre and some sap green. And here I'm just indicating some of the window shapes. You don't have to be specific in this. This you just try to get the value um, and a basic shape and indicate um, those shapes in the shadow because you don't want them to be too obtrusive. Um, now going back to the cerulean, that was a, probably cerulean blue with a little bit of, um, I think it was a phthalo blue, that was a very bright blue there on that awning in the front of the building. We're almost done with this, um, so we're probably going to just jump right into the next one. Uh, there we go. So, 
where are we? Well, we're right down the street here. There's a harbor scene. I think I took that picture with my kayak, um, which gives you that lower perspective point. Um, now, what we want to try to do here is we want to try to get the color of the sky reflecting into the water. And as we know that anything reflecting, okay, in water or whatever, is usually darker than the thing it's reflecting. So the water we know has to get darker, much darker. And that's where we're just adding a little bit more color. And yeah, so it's, it's, it's switched over. As you can see, there's a little, you know, little discrepancy in the photograph. I didn't turn my camera on when I did this one, but it's basically the same, it's exactly the same thing. It's just, you know, a little different brush stroking. So now I'm working into the shadows of or the land masses okay which are all backlit so there's no there's no light hitting them they're all pretty much you know just a, a main silhouette but to make it a little interesting um, I put a little bit of red into uh, in, in, into that foliage um, if you didn't know the colors behind, I'm sorry yeah so the colors used in the background um, on the sky and the water was a color called opera pink, alizarin crimson, and the cerulean blue, and um, and did it on top and bottom. Now I'm making the silhouette of the boat, uh, some of the masts, um, and just getting the basic shape. I'm not really out to try to get a perfect uh, interpretation of, of that sailboat at all. It's just really the I'm just trying to get a feeling of that boat in that light situation, which I believe it was sunset, and uh, and that's really it. I did a little bit of dry brushing just underneath the boat. Um, since these are small, um, the texture actually really lent itself to that dry brush technique, which gave us that feeling of little ripples in the water. Um, uh, the, the hull looked like it needed to be a little darker. Um, and we, I just went over it with a, a, a second wash. Now here's some more rigging um, and drying it off. And I think that's it. Uh, this was probably the quickest one. This one, however, took a little bit more time. Um, that's a little stream up in Vermont. Uh, as you can see, the paper gets really, <laughs> you know, working on four different, uh, or actually at this point it was three different uh, watercolors. Um, this one kind of got messy, but doesn't matter. We're going to paint over these things. Remember, these are not finishes. They're studies. Um, we want to try to, you know, see the abstract shapes quickly. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm massing in where the rock colors are going to be. Um, and I'm going to start carving out, working in the negative to start shaping up those rocks. Um, there was a lot of interesting uh, formations. A lot of them are in these nice triangle shapes, which is always good for a comp composition. And uh, the colors I'm using in the background, actually the colors I used for the front um, was just burnt umber and ultramarine blue in a very light diluted wash. Now I'm using uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, sap green for the foliage, and some permanent green. Now I'm using a little bit of, I think there's a little touch of a turquoise color that I have. Uh, I think it just says turquoise on there. I don't think it's not uh, any special variety. Um, that's just to give that translucency in the water. Now here I'm working around the shapes, just trying to get some, you know, carving out some of the boulders. Uh, Looking at this, if I wanted to change the composition, I should have made <clears throat> the foreground on a slight uh, diagonal. Um, it, it looks a little, uh, well, it's just that it, it, it needed something. It Maybe some larger rocks in the foreground. But compositionally, you know, you had those two static horizontals, which is okay. But, you know, uh, I think to make it better, you probably want to use a... Um, you know, larger rocks in the foreground and and vary the angle. 
which means just a, a nice uh, uh, diagonal line in the foreground would have worked a little bit better. All right, now, um, so here, uh, I'm just adding in some of the, um, actually, these are the shadow shapes. So what I'm trying to do is I'm actually drawing just the shadows to indicate the rock forms, um, which is all we really need to do here. We don't have to go, you know, uh, we don't have to draw every little striation in the rock. We're just kind of looking at the big, again, the big shapes. That's that's what this is all about. And um, and just reacting to, like, the larger masses on the rocks. Um, this is very uh, impressionistic, if you want to call it that. Um, <clears throat> I'm just relating to color and shape. Um not much detail. I mean, the only, what I'm doing here now is really not detail. It's just texturing. But you can see those big patterns are forming. And we're getting more of a feel for, um, you know, those rocks, the textures. And, and you know, little by little, it will start to gel together um, once we meet the half tones with the lighter parts of the rocks. And put some more embellishments in the background. Now behind those rocks, it's just like a little berm, kind of kind of goes into the tree line. Um, not much information there, a couple of fallen trees, which you'll see at the end that I add in later on. Now here I'm going back and adding some accent marks to those bigger shapes, okay? Um, very quickly, and I, this video is sped up like four times um, just for brevity you know uh, 20 minutes per sketch would, would would just probably you know throw you off uh, it'd take way too long to watch you know over an hour and 20 minutes worth of stuff so just keeping it short and sped up um, you get to see the composition forming here some more accent lines I'm trying to brings things together, you know, those shapes together in the foreground and again in the background too. Um, now it might look like that's a black, but it really wasn't a black. It was more of a burnt umber, ultramarine blue. Uh, I don't normally use black. Here I'm using just a little splatter technique just to give some illusion of, again, texture. Um, it doesn't really represent much at all. Now there's a little tide pool there, and now I'm drying it because I feel like I need to progress a little bit more wet onto dry. And uh, you'll see how that starts to work out. So those areas in the foreground that you see that are white, those are little you know river rocks. Here I'm, I am adding a little opaque color. Again, uh, what we just mentioned earlier you know, some fallen trees, some branches. You want to try to make this look as rustic as possible. Um, and these little embellishments that, you know, you, you could, you know, if you do, you're going to take a little longer to do this. If you, Let's say you really like this image and you wanted to explore it a little bit more in depth. By all means, you can paint around some of those shapes. But for now, we want to try to, we're working really for composition and, we're looking at the big picture here. Um, a lot of times by doing these little 20 minute sketches, it may save you a lot of time in the long run because sometimes we'll start a painting and we won't think it through. And then we, we fail because we haven't planned it out properly. Um, this exercise is here to help you see what you're going to be painting and helps you think things through. And there it is. Well, thanks for watching, people, and I will see you in the next video.